And I think that's like, I think you're significantly missing out and probably will lose in the long run. What's up, guys? Welcome to 5-Minute Fatherhood. So were we meant to work with our wives? This is, a, this is oftentimes a conversation or a question that most people in our culture have sort of a knee-jerk you know, response to no, like, you know, she's got her thing, I got my thing, even if your wife stays at home, there isn't a, a natural expectation that, hey, maybe we were, maybe the design was for us to work together at some level. Yeah. Um, and I was having this conversation recently, and somebody pointed out in Genesis 2, something that I'd never really thought of before. So um, in Genesis 2, 18, it says, the Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone, I will make a helper suitable for him. And so a lot of us know about that verse, but what um, this friend of mine pointed out was, you know, that was in the context of his work. And I was like, what? Mm. And it, it was like, I, I kind of surprised me because, of course, there were no children uh, yet. Yeah, and true. if you read the context, what's going on is, is that Adam is working. He's cultivating, he's naming the animals, he's given all this responsibility over this mm. garden. And then the Lord looks at that and says, it's not good for him to be alone. He needs help. I'm going to make a helper suitable, suitable for him. And so that made me think, wow, there's <clears throat> this question or this knee-jerk reaction we have to, to the, the idea that you know husbands and wives are really not meant to work together. That may be um, a bit of sort of a modern um, reality as opposed to a design. Um, and if yeah. you think about you know, the way that God brings husbands and wives together, um, how they complement each other, um, and, and a lot of that happens, obviously, in the family, in the home. Um, I don't think this is a rule. You know, if, you, if this is not, you know, either work for you logistically or healthy for you, like there's no, uh, this is not one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt work with your wife. I, I just find it, really, <laughs> uh, I find it really interesting, though, that when God looked at Adam and in his work, um, there was a sense in which I don't want him to do that alone. And so one of the things I know that we've, tried to figure out as a, as a, as a couple but with April and I is, just, is there are places where we can overlap? And so, you know, we've started, you know, five different companies over the last 20 years, and every single one of those have had a, a very different conversation around how do we work together in this company? How do we work together in this yeah. company? And some of them have been like really, really intense, like working together. Others have been a lot less. Um, and so we've, we've kind of waded into this and it's been a really huge blessing for us to figure this out. Um, but I think that it's it's instructive to think about the the original design. It appears, if you think about it from Genesis two, was that God wanted a husband to work with his wife and wanted to find a woman that would really where they would complement one another, um, not just in sort of a a family setting that's kind of removed from everything else, but really in, in all of life and much of life is work. And so, again, that's challenging in this culture, um, but I, I think that, that it's important to kind of think about the design of what's going on there in Genesis 2. But yeah, Jeff, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I agree. And I think it's, it's, it's even less, too, about, I think, um, it meaning like, oh, we have to both do the exact same thing together at all times, like you said, um, and more about like what you said of... <clears throat> Well, I like how you, you said like you and April have found, you know, five companies, but it's looked different each time. And that's what I love is like, man, you're, you, we have to work to be as a team going towards whatever we're going towards. Right. And another way that I like to think about it, that's kind of helpful for me and Alyssa is like, we are both, cause I think sometimes the, what, especially talking to the guy audience, I think sometimes what guys can do is think that like the wife, you know, if, if, cause some wives are way better, you know, and way smarter than the men on like business and all that type of stuff. But in general, some men can think like, oh, I'm the, I do the business stuff and my wife has like no idea about that. So why would I include right. her? She's kind of like a novice, that whole thing. And I think that's like, I think you're significantly missing out and probably will lose in the long run if you are not including her in whatever type of business or venture you do. Um, because again, the way I like to think about it is like me and Alyssa, are both investors at some level in a company. And that company is like our work, right? Our vocation yeah. of just like what we've been, how we've been gifted by God to go out into the world. Now, just like with any company, there's usually a passive investor and an active investor, right? There's maybe an investor who kind of turns CEO. And there's one investor who like never, who's more like a consultant who just shows up at the boardroom, you know, in board meetings, but in the boardroom, they're very powerful and they give really good advice. Um, and I think, you, but, but at the same time, they're still kind of like joined at the hip because they're both investors or founders of that company. Company, right. Yeah. And so I think that's a really helpful way that we think about it is like, you know, 
me and Alyssa as a team means that we are both like on the boardroom, right? We are both in, both in the boardroom making those decisions. Now, one of us might go functionally do more work in this thing, right? And I don't just mean even business. I mean like with our kids, right? I mean with yeah. business. I mean with our job, with our community, with our neighbors. Like one might take a heavier role, um, but we are both kind of equal seats in the boardroom um, with vision and with founding and as like investors in this. And I think that is really important to like mm. really unify yourself as a team with your wife, uh, because you're losing out on just that. I just feel like, yeah, there's been so many times that's like, they're almost intangible moments, right? There's been so many times where you just think you might make a decision or it'd be fine, you know, or you'd be like, oh, well they don't, you know, my wife doesn't really know this or know the business, so it's okay. But then you maybe bring it to them and you, and you just kind of off a cuff, like mention, I'm struggling through this and they just drop golden Mm -hmm. nuggets. Right. And you're like, man, that is what marriage is for. You know, that like, there's this unit there, there is this kind of, um, roundedness, this well-roundedness when two become one that I think we don't take advantage of enough. And so that's what I would say. Yeah. And if you guys are wondering, like uh, for a framework for how do you balance all of this stuff? One of the things that we really encourage you guys to do is establish a seven day rhythm. And if you're looking for like a tool or for how to like actually begin to to live into a seven day rhythm, uh, we have a course over at familyteams.com called the seven day family. So if you go over to familyteams.com, Check out the seven day family course. It'll help you figure out exactly how to design your, your, your week and tr- how to figure out your ideal week, how to live into that, how to tweak that, how to grow that, which is a really big part of figuring out how to steward things together. So check that out. If you want to get a discount uh, code is dads. Uh, so just put that in um, on, the, on the store there and you can get 10% off of the seven day family.